Okay, this is part two of the RAD series. We're going to look at RAD 2. And if you already watched RAD 1, basically everything is the same. It's a little, it's a different color, it's a different head. Um, I didn't think to move the battery at all. Dang it. Hang on there. Let me get a screwdriver. Got to move the 9 volt battery. This is the uh, RAD1 controller that I just did the video on. Let's get the battery out of it. There we go. And this robot has never been tested, never been run. It's dated uh, 1999. I don't think I'm going to bother to put the battery cover back on the back of this. If it doesn't mind, I know I don't. So I'm just going to have to take it off again. But if you watch the other video, it's, it's all the same. You've got shift, fire, you've got arms open and closed, you've got that's the open, that's the closed. You got push to talk with a microphone, driving the treads forward, backward, um, waist up and waist down. The main on off switch. On the robot itself, you have a little convenient tray that you can put on it. And on the bottom of the robot, to where the date was be seen that is your speed selector switch for the treads high and low the uh, rockets you put in here and as you saw in the last video I've taken everything out of the envelope and, and showed what was in the instruction manual this is how it's packed you'd have your rockets your warranty card that you can mail in your instruction sheet that says rad 2 not gonna open that it's the same information you have already if you've watched the other video, and if you haven't, go watch the other video. To work all of the RAD robots, I already covered it. They wanted you to buy separately a NICAD 6 volt battery and charger, like this. And I already again have one of those out and hopefully charged. I don't know, like I say, it's, uh, it's over 20 years old, so who knows. I'll put that in there. I'm going to turn the switch on the transmitter and then turn the switch on the robot. So it did a system check. I hear the same static sound that we heard in the number one one, so it's probably static being picked up in the room. There's a talk button on here that you can push. Test, test, one, two, okay. Okay, then we've got um, the fire buttons. I don't have any missiles pushed in there because I'm not going to open the package, but basically, it rotates this turret and fires them as they come around. Makes that sound. Uh, arms open and close. Let's manually try those. Okay. That works. And the waist down. I mean, it really goes all the way down. You can actually pick something up. It also allows you to uh, direct your missiles up and down. Let's see how far back it goes. Long ways. Okay, stop there. And let's go ahead and see if it'll drive. I'm hitting the buttons on the back. It's hard to hold this and move the joysticks and hold the 9 volt battery in all at the same time. It's like the battery didn't quite have enough power to run both motors at the same time. Let's try it now. It's giving me that. 
So I'm thinking that uh, 20 year old NICAT is a little bit on the weak side. But let's just see what happens if we move the uh, speed selector to high. I'm sure that'll make it even harder for it to do anything. But you never know. You don't know unless you try. I think the flashing lights mean charge your battery. That's what it comes down to. So there are the functions. I'm putting that back to low speed. Turn that off. The speaker seems to be under the chin here. And imagine this has got the same carrying handle on the back of the head for carrying the robot around. Let's see if there is anything on the box of interest. Be significantly different than the Rad 1. We get close enough where we can scan through this. Everything on this side is a sideways. So, there you have it. That is the RAD2. Now, the RAD2 SE will be coming up next.